know, during this time of uh, pandemic and people buying everything in quantities, let's talk a little teeny tiny bit about something that we all look for, but it's kind of hard to find. Hand sanitizer. What are you going to do when your bottle of hand sanitizer goes from full to almost empty? But the alcohol sold out. All we can find is 50%. What are we going to do? Hey, there's an old science trick you can play with. And that's kind of a fun thing to do. Is you take your 50% alcohol, you take some non-iodized salt. It will not have the words iodized on it. You can use non-iodized salt. You mix them, them together and the water will collect on the salt crystals and it will settle down to the bottom of the jar. If you put this in a jar, which I'm about to do, so we're going to do this experiment and see if it really, really works. Pour in one bottle of 50% isopropyl alcohol and non-iodized salt. I'm not measuring it, I'm just dumping it in. See if that's enough. So we've got isopropyl alcohol and non-iodized salt. So what I did was put the lid on here, added a little more salt, put the lid on so we can sit here. And if you watch it go, you can watch it separate. You can literally watch the alcohol go to the top while the salt water goes to the bottom half and it separates out you can see that clear band on the top that's the pure alcohol or the rubbing alcohol and the super saturated salt water is a cloudy part on the bottom you can see it continuing to separate it only takes a couple of minutes for it to separate which is kind of fun to watch actually it's almost like a play toy for the kids it makes a great science project but this is how you can concentrate the isopropyl alcohol you get in the store if you can't find it in 70% or greater concentration, the 70% or 91% that they sell in the stores. If they're sold out, this is how you can get the alcohol separated using the non-iodized salt and a 50% or less mixture of isopropyl and the fit bottles of 50% are still readily available. To take the alcohol out of here you can either very gently pour it off the top into another container or in my case I have a small um, syringe it's like a little flavor injector or a turkey baster type, type of thing a real small one I'm going to use that to siphon out or pull out the alcohol off the top and leave the salt water in the bottom so they don't get mixed up. So now that that's separated, I could pour it into the small measuring cup here, but like I said, I want to use this small uh, flavor injector syringe. It's going to be easier for me and I'll just put the alcohol back into the alcohol bottle. But pull the alcohol up into the syringe and squirt it into the bottle. Piece of cake. And when you get down to the edge, or you're almost out of the clear liquid, you can use this like a little vacuum cleaner. And go around and pull up the uh, excess alcohol with some salt into it. But if you get salt in there, you stand there, you sit here and let it sit for a minute and you'll see the alcohol and the salt separate inside the syringe. Kind of a cool thing that way <laughs> you're not wasting anything then you can squirt the good old salt water back into your jar and continue to siphon out or pull out just the alcohol. Remember see. rubbing alcohol is poisonous. Do not drink. It will kill you. It's good for external applications only. You know, it's not like uh, making your own Jack Daniels or 
vodka or anything else but this way you have an alcohol concentration that's at least see how I got some of the uh, salt water in here in the bottom and how if you're watching it you can see it already separate if it gets shaken up or mixed up see how it all all the salt crystals drop down again so I just take the syringe squirt out the salt crystals out the bottom now I've got nothing but clear liquid left and that's concentrated rubbing alcohol we're gonna, don't forget we're going to relabel the bottle no longer 50% so I'm going to scratch that off and I'm just going to put 7 0 plus percent be safe and have fun